coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. After a month of blazing electioneering, a near <coughs> hush has descended in the 12 districts of Eastern and Northern Assam with campaigning for the first phase coming to an end at 6 this evening. A total of 264 candidates, 23 of whom are women, are in the fray for the contest in 47 of Assam's 126 assembly constituencies where polling takes place from 7 in the morning on March 27, Saturday. The state has a total, total electorate of 2.32 crore, but only 81 lakh voters are listed for the first phase. Presidents of four political parties are in the battle in phase one. Ripun Bora of the Congress, Otul Bora of the Okham Gana Parishad, Lurin Juti Gogoi of Okham Jatiyo Parishad, and Okhil Gogoi of Rise or Dal. Of course, the other high-profile candidate who is in the fray in this phase is Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal, who is contesting from his traditional Majuli constituency. Significantly, in a case that has been rare in Assam, one of the party leaders, Rise or Dal President Okil Gogoi, is contesting the polls from jail. The polls in the first phase will be significant for many reasons. First, it is the Brahmaputra Valley heartland that these polls are taking place. Secondly, the demographic composition of the 81 lakh voters broadly comprise Assamese caste Hindus and ethnic groups, tea garden community, Assamese Muslims, and a sprinkling of Gorkhas, Hindi-speaking people, and others. Before we debate on the possibilities or the outcome in these 47 seats, let's take a look at how the political parties fared in these 47 seats in 2016. If we can take a look at the at uh, the election results of 2016. Uh, in 2016, that is the last assembly elections, the BJP had won 27 seats. Out of, I'm talking about these 47 seats that are going to the polls in the first phase. The BJP won 27, the AGP 8, Congress 9, AIUDF 2, and Independent 1. Uh, that means that in 2016, the BJP and its allies had won 35 of these 47 seats. Yes, the campaign has been acrimonious with the BJP and the main opposition Congress engaged in a blistering war of words throughout the past four weeks. <coughs> While the BJP has described this election as a class of civilizations and singling out Congress ally Badruddin Ajmal, chief of the AIUDF, as the main target, the Congress has sought to pin down the BJP with charges of non-implementation of its 2016 poll promises and for bringing in a legislation like the Citizenship Amendment Act. And yes, there has been a huge tug of war between the two parties to corner the bulk of the estimated 10 lakh tea garden community voters who will be voting in phase one. Let's debate. Joining me tonight is former MP Kirip Chaliha. BJP MP Kamekha Prasad Tasa is live with me from Jorhat. Joining me as well is Mr. Dwizen Sharma, senior Congress leader. Also with me is Assam BJP spokesperson Janki Guswami. Guwahati University professor and commentator Dr. Rajiv Handik is also with me. And from Moran, I am joined by Professor Atmaram Kumar, a commentator. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to North East tonight. Uh, let me go straight to you, uh, Mr. Kirip Chalia. Uh, you know, how significant is phase one? Uh, the two sides have already campaigned very, very vigorously in the selections. The BJP charge led by none other than Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Congress, of course, has filled it, uh, uh, you know, in its electioneering led by Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi. And, of course, a plethora of other leaders uh, like the Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Baghel uh, and Asok Chavan uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, how keenly poised or how evenly poised is this battle? What do you think of phase one? Well, uh, the 
Phase one has, has shown, shown uh, that BJP is taking the Assam <coughs> election extremely seriously. The kind of campaign that is being launched in a, in a state assembly election by central leaders, including the prime minister, the home minister, the defense minister, and a number of other ministers, including uh, the BJP president. Uh, uh, this Assam election is almost uh, becoming an election for the parliament. Uh, and the shrill and the aggressive uh, posture uh, that these central leaders are taking on local issues uh, uh, shows, shows uh, that uh, BJP is banking heavily on a victory here. They need a victory here because uh, of the states that are going to polls, naturally big, uh, BJP doesn't figure uh, significantly in any other state except, except now uh, according to some poly, uh, opinion polls some some signs are uh, of uh, that. So you, you are basically saying that is one of the reasons why the BJP is taking the Assam elections extremely seriously. They have left no stone unturned to see that the campaigning momentum uh, never got lost in the last four weeks. I'll come to you. Let me come to you. Uh, I have been told that Assam CEO Mr. Nitin Kare is uh, available, but I'll be going to him in exactly one and a half minutes from now and a minute from now. Uh, but quickly, your comments, Mr. Dujan Sharma, today the campaigning has ended. We are, we are, we are, we are just analyzing. We are not going to see, ask for votes. No party ask for vote after the campaigning has ended. But the question is, you are a very senior leader of the Congress party. Uh, you know, do you, do you think that the for battle this time is going to be evenly poised? Because in 2016, there was, your party was going to the polls after 15 15 years of continuously being in power, there was a lot of anti-incumbency. But this time around, do you think you have been able to cover some lost ground? And is this battle going to be keenly fought? Yes, uh, necessarily Congress is going to gain the lost ground in this election and particularly in the first phase. And uh, I have to say that if you look to the last year, 2016 result, Congress has lost many seats, but about 15 seats in a very small margin and both UDF and Congress combined was was is, is a very big yeah, um, um, uh, and in that case I have seen I have observed that uh, Congress is going to go, give a very good result in this election particularly in phase one because Congress has taken this election as a very serious uh, yeah, uh, serious nature and all our leaders have come and we fought in a very significant way. We are fighting to win the election. And we are sure, we are sure that this election, these voters of Upper Assam particularly uh, in 47 constituencies, they will vote for in favor of Congress because of our our guarantees and other guarantees things. and others. Okay, yes, we, we, have, we'll, they have, they we will could, expand. They, they, they we will expand. Us. We'll have to wait and watch. At the end of the day, the voter is king. In, when whenever there is an election, I'll go straight to Mr. Nitin Kare, the Chief Electoral Officer of Assam, joining me uh, from his office. An extremely busy person, uh, Mr. Nitin Kare. Uh, welcome to Northeast tonight, uh, Mr. Nitin Kare, the Chief Electoral Officer of Assam. Uh, extremely busy man. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Mr. Nitin Kare, can you hear me first of all? Yes, thank you. I can hear you. All right. Uh, welcome to Northeast tonight, Mr. Nitin Kare, the Chief Electoral Officer. Mr. Kare, you know the campaigning for the first phase of polls have ended at 6 p.m. today. The Election Commission obviously is all set for polling on Saturday. What's the law and order situation on the ground? Is everything under control? We are fully prepared to conduct the first poll of elections in a free, fair, safe and peaceful manner. We have sufficient central armed police forces to uh, dominate the area. Wherever required, they have been put up in a static team at the required number of polling stations. And our police and magistracy have taken sufficient preventive measures. Large number of uh, antisocial elements uh, they have been bound down under different uh, provisions of law. The license arms have also been de got deposited. Around 5,402 uh, license arms have been deposited. In the last parliamentary election, some uh, arms were deposited. They were also there. 2, 3, 7, 5 intimidators have been uh, bound down. 
Apart from that, uh, 43 illegal arms have been seized, 676 numbers of illegal ammunition have been seized, and we have till now been able to conduct the poll process in a peaceful manner, and we are fully prepared to conduct the polling on 27th as well as in the latter stages in a peaceful, free and fair manner. We have sufficient number of forces and we are leaving no stone unturned to ensure that every voter can come to the polling station without any fear and he can cast his vote. So that I can assure on behalf of Election Commission of India to you. Right. Uh, Mr. Khare, you know, there is tremendous enthusiasm among the people, among the voters. What would you like to tell them? Anything specific that you'd like to tell the voters? I would like to tell all the voters that we have made all the arrangements like provision for assured minimum facilities at the polling stations. There are facilities for drinking water, toilets, ramps have been constructed, wheelchairs have been arranged for. So all facilities have been provided there in view of the COVID pandemic, all the necessary precautions like sanitization of polling booths, provision for hand wash, provision for soap, provision for hand sanitizer has been made. Every voter will be given a plastic gloss so that there is no contamination after he touches the machine. And we are also, we are also going to provide for a face ma mask if that o if some particular voter doesn't have a face cover or face mask. My appeal is uh, for all the voters to come out of their homes in large numbers and vote and at the same time they should also uh, follow the COVID protocol. They should come with a mask or a face cover when they start from their homes. But some of them if they don't come with a face cover or mask at polling station, we'll provide it to them. My appeal to the voters is to maintain COVID protocol at the polling stations, to maintain social distancing and to abide by the uh, suggestions, instructions of the election commission and uh, to keep themselves safe, keep others safe. And I am sure that with these arrangements, we will have a safe poll from COVID point of view also. I am seeing that we will definitely have a good turnout. What about what about interstate borders? Are you deploying additional security measures along the borders? There are a lot of interstate borders along, uh, you know, in the first phase. What about interstate borders, Mr. Khare? Special measures along the interstate borders? Uh, the police check nakas and other arrangements have been uh, put in place. So thorough checking is going on at every place. We have seen to it that the use, misuse of muscle power, money power, liquor power can't be allowed to influence the voters. So after the declaration of election, that is after 26th of April, sorry, 26th of February, we have seized around 87 crores cash and liquor and other articles and contraband articles. So there is no question of any such misuse of money, liquor, or muscle power to influence the voters. And all the interstate check nakas have been put in place, and there is no scope for any mischief played by anyone. Mr. Khare, uh, what is the, is there any role of the army? Have you kept the army on standby? Do they have a role at all? We have made sufficient security arrangements and I can assure you that we will be able to conduct the polls in a peaceful and smooth manner. Right. Finally, my final question to you, my last question to you. Uh, usually, you know, when we see there is a huge turnout on voting days in Assam, do you expect the same this time, the turnout? With all the arrangements in place with all the precautions which we have taken and the awareness generation which we have done amongst the voters, I am confident that we will see a good turnout. 
Right, Mr. Nitin Kare, thank you very much indeed for speaking to me on notice tonight, uh, taking time out from an extremely busy schedule. Thank you very much. Now, coming back to the debate, uh, we have been basically discussing <coughs> the first phase. Let me quickly go to you, Dr. Rajiv Handik. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Handik joining me from Guwahati University. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Handik, uh, you know, we, we are talking about the contest in the 47 seats in the Brahmaputra Valley heartland. In the last elections, that is in 2016, uh, the BJP and the AGP combined, they got 35 of these 47 seats. Uh, this time also, we have seen the BJP and AGP, they campaigned in a very coordinated manner. The Congress is also upbeat. The Congress is also claiming that they are also going to come up with a very good performance this time. So as, as someone who has been keenly observing the situation, what is your assessment? Do you think the tea garden community will be the deciding factor? Very interesting uh, contest. As you rightly said, both the BJP uh, uh, combined, combined and the Congress combined. They have been really uh, working very hard at the grassroots to motivate the voters to, work, uh, to vote for them. Uh, we don't know what will be the outcome, but we are really in for a very, very interesting contest. And as you also said, the tea garden community uh, is going to vote. Uh, but this time round, uh, it's difficult to sway, uh, say which side the vote will go because the Congress has fielded quite a number of uh, leaders belonging to the tea garden community. And overall, there is soaps galore all around. And uh, let us see. Uh, which party is able to entice this uh, vote bank, as you can say. Okay. But, but what is important is also to note that, you know, this first phase of election has always been a sort of determining factor uh, in, in the elections that had happened earlier. Right. It, it is the par party that gets the most seat in this first phase that goes on to form the government. That has been the history. So this is very... Okay. Uh, very interesting and I think uh, that is a very interesting point. The party which wins the maximum number of seats in the first phase goes on to win the elections. We'll have to wait and watch. Uh, let me go to Jorhat from where I'm joined by BJP MP, Mr. Kamaika Prasad Tasa, a prominent member of the T community. Uh, Mr. Kamaika Prasad Tasa, uh, you know, 47 seats going to the polls. Uh, there is an estimated total of 10 lakh voters. Uh, a large chunk, there are 12 constituencies in Dibrugar and Tinsukia districts alone, which are dominated by tea gardens. There are a lot of tea gardens in Sipsagar, Charaideo, Jorhat and Gulaghat districts. So do you think my pointed straight question to you, uh, Mr. Kamakha Tasa, do you think the tea garden community is going to uh, decide uh, the result uh, of this particular first phase of the elections? Uh, was, <coughs> was with, <coughs> was with the, I am uh, confident that the people of Tea Garden and ex Tea Garden areas will vote for BJP because they know what Congress have done. Congress are using many uh, what called systems to provoke the Tea Garden uh, people. Uh, they have called the Chief Minister of uh, Chhattisgarh. They have used. Uh, Honorable Priyanka Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, and they are now staying in the house of tea garden laborers. Uh, Priyanka Gandhi is going to plug, have plugged tea. But instead of that, no, the my whole Mr. Thing they are Tasa, using Mr. In Mr. Mr. Election, Mr. 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 Kamakha Congress, Tasa, yes. my, my question is we have, we have heard all of that. Yes. We have heard all of that. My question is you have been observing, you have been yourself contesting elections in this particular area. You know the ground situation. Do you think the tea garden community votes is going to determine the results this time? In the first phase? Yes. The votes of base, the votes of tea garden community will determine the result because maximum seats of Aparasam, the first phase election is dominated by the tea garden areas. <coughs> and in the tea garden areas, voting percent is more. It is I have we have seen. It is between 70 to 75 percent. 
uh, in the tea garden areas, it touches in some areas, it touches to 80 percent also. Uh, when they vote for this uh, in the election, maximum vote will, uh, the people wants to vote. They, they take this uh, election is a very serious issue. And I think the tea garden voters will decide the election, decide the results of the candidates I, as uh, I have observed. Okay, uh, Mr. Atmaram Kumar, Professor Atmaram Kumar joining me from Moran, uh, also another prominent member of the community. Uh, Mr. Atmaram Kumar, uh, you know, both right from the beginning of this campaign for the first phase, the BJP as well as the Congress we have seen, you have also seen, they have made direct attempts to influence the tea garden voters. Uh, the BJP has been already talking about opening bank accounts, they have been talking about increasing the wages in, during the time that they have come to the government in the last five years. Uh, we have seen that the BJP also talking about uh, providing cooking gas uh, to the tea garden labor lines and so on. And the Congress coming up with a guarantee saying that they are going to pay, increase the wages to 365. Now my question is, not that, my question is in view of this very, very direct competitive attempt at bringing the tea community to their side, do you think this time there will be a keen battle uh, between the BJP and the Congress in the as far as the tea garden votes are concerned? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hussein. Uh, actually, the 47 seats in which the election is going to take place in the day after tomorrow, uh, this will be the most crucial you know, day for both Congress and NDA you know, and the alliance, the National Democratic Alliance, because as you have said, the 10 lakh voters are involved and the 10 lakh tea garden voters are involved in this phase of first phase of election. And whichever party, whether it is NDA or BJP, whichever garners maximum number of votes from the tea community, I think they are going to, you know, affect the future course of the election as well. Now, the question is, who is going to garner the votes? That is the point. Now, definitely, there are two camps in the tea gardens. Uh, traditionally, as you know, the Congress uh, had been getting the votes of the tea garden people. But in recent times, the last 10 years or so, maximum number of people seems to have, you know, you know, sided with the NDA or BJP you know, party. So therefore, this time, I think it will be very, very keen contest because BJP also, as I said in my last discussion, that it was in an advantageous position. But because of this, you know, hike, wage hike issue, which was challenged by the, you know, companies and the which, uh, stay order has been given by the Honorable High Court. So this, of course, will is a kind of a big jolt for the BJP party. However, uh, Day before tomorrow, uh, a declaration was made by the party that 24 rupees hike is, is given, and that is a kind of a damage control made by the BJP. And I think this will, you know, uh, have some kind of you know positive effect again. So the whole thing is very very delicately poised this time. Okay. Now, so far as uh, I would like to add one more thing, uh, Congress party, as you know, the so far as the tea gardens are concerned. SCMS has been the backbone of Congress, SCMS. Yes. But this time, there seems to be a major rift in the SCMS itself. Because as you know, the very uh, very recently, the General Secretary of uh, SCMS, he joined BJP, and the president of the same organization is, is in Congress. So this, that, uh, it's a symbolic that there is a major divide in the SCM is itself. Okay, we have, we, so this is a very significant that. point, Atmaram Kumar, <laughs> you, you have made, Mr. you are talking about Mr. Bhagirat Karan, right? Uh, no, no, sir, I'm no, talking, talking no, about Rupesh Gwala. Oh, you are talking about Rupesh Gwala, Mr. Rupesh Gwala. But let me also remind yes. you, let me also, you are talking uh, about Rupesh Gwala, of course, but let me also remind you that yes. Mr. Bhagirat Karan, under the prominent member of the Assam Chamasdu Sangh, uh, he also joined. had yes. also joined the BJP recently. We will, we will come to all of that. Uh, but uh, Janki Goswami, I'm coming to you, Mr. Kirip Chalia and Mr. Dujan Sharma. But Janki Goswami, uh, you know, it is not just the whole contest in the 47 seats is not just about only the tea garden voters. Uh, we, see, let us not forget the fact that in the first phase in 47 seats, there is a total 
total of 81 lakh voters of which the tea garden voters comprise one eight that is about estimated about 10 10 lakhs now the question is uh, this is this comprises the SMEs, the demographic profile, if you look at these 81 lakh voters, as I have said, you were a little late, as I've said right in the beginning. Uh, there is the SMEs caste Hindus, the SMEs ethnic groups, uh, there is the SMEs Muslims, there is the tea garden community, there is a sprinkling of Gurkhas and quite a sizable number of Hindi speaking people. This is the broadly, there are a lot of other people, but this is the broad demographics of these 81 lakh voters who are going to cast their votes on the first phase on March 27. And uh, do you, are you, are you happy today when the election has ended? See, election campaign has ended, we are not going to ask for votes, you are not going to ask for votes, etc. But my point is, are you are you a happy person today at the campaigning? Do you think you have addressed the issues of all these different demographic communities, which are demographic segments, which I have just pointed out, Janki? Uh, yes, basically, if you see, if you look at the campaign trail that we have done, it is not only about the campaign. It is not the campaign that we have done in the last few days when the election wave has started. It is about the work that we have done for the people of Assam, for the upliftment of the general people. You are talking about the tea garden voters, the, uh, the general holistic upliftment that we have done for the tea garden workers. So we have the blessings of the people. We know that they are going to reposit their faith in us once again. And not only that, if you see, last time also 35, I think, 35 seats out of these you, 47 you, were you, in our you, favor. You won, BJP won 27, AGP won 8. Uh, so yes. that is 35. So 35 in all in our favor. This time we are going to score better because the vibe is in our favor. Our government has been a pro-development government and the wave is a pro-BJP wave. Okay, now the main point which uh, Janki Goswami, the spokesperson of the BJP is saying uh, is that, you know, it's not just about addressing communities now. See, he's saying that the, in, in the last five years, the BJP has worked for the upliftment of the, or for the uplift of the general people of the entire segments in the state comprising everybody and that is the reason which you still uh, stand in good stead as far as the <coughs> BJP is concerned that we'll see it through. Mr. Kripp uh, do you think uh, you have w observed uh, the BJP campaign, you have observed the Congress campaign, uh, do you think these segments, I have already pointed out the different broad demographic segments that are vote, that are that that comprise the 81 lakh voters in the first phase, do you think the BJP which is the ruling party and then I'll ask you about the Congress, do you think the BJP has addressed the issues of these uh, communities, because the uh, I I have my I'll ask my follow up question later. Yes. See, uh, uh, there has been so many so many declarations of entitlements. Personally, I am not in favor of this kind of blind entitlements and competitiveness among various communities to be given all kinds of entitlements. Free food, free this, free this, free freebies. Freebies has never been a healthy thing in social development, and economic development for that matter. This only means that the middle class suffers because after all, who, who is getting these things free? Who are the beneficiaries? But the, the need... Who, who, is paying, who, who, is, who, who is paying for it? The taxpayers? How many people? Who are the people who pay pays tax? That's a different, uh, different uh, argument, a different, a different debate. But what I'm saying is, Entitlements alone, I don't think, has won elections in any state. Leave aside a sum. SMS people are very emotional. And I also don't believe, I, I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, to uh, defer to you to a little, little, uh, to slightly, not much. But I don't think you know, there is a total communal kind of voting, that this community will vote for this, that community will vote No, I didn't vote say that. That's what I'm saying. I so, didn't so say that. that. No, like, I didn't, I'm, I'm just that, only giving that, you a breakup of the community. 47 seats are decided by only tea gardens. No, it's not like that. It's a, it's a general, there are all people who, okay. who vote. That is an important vote point. Above, above caste or communal. I, I'm just uh, coming, I'm coming to you, Mr. Dujan <laughs> Sharma. Let's quickly go to Mr. Kamaka Prasad Tassa. Uh, uh, Mr. Kamaka Prasad Tassa, you see, you have been a Lok Sabha MP as well. Uh, you know the ground situation. My question is, 81 lakh voters are going to vote in the first phase, of which the T community is just about 10 lakh. Uh, because, uh, you know, that is just about one-eighth of the total number of voters. Now, as Mr. Kirip Chalia has very rightly said that it will be, perhaps may not be correct to say that Tea Garden Community will determine the results of all these 47 seats. Uh, now, my question to you, uh, do you think, uh, you know, the people are going to vote on the basis of the five years that the BJP has done? 
Or do you think they're going to look at candidates? Do you think they're going to look at the election manifesto which your party has given this time and compare it with the other parties? What is your assessment? Now, my assessment is that people will vote for the for in, uh, what Kripta has said. People have mixed response. They first look to the face of the candidate. Secondly, they look to the party. Third, they are saying that their which party is ruling in Delhi, they will uh, they will help the state. Thirdly, communal thing is one I think one simple part in this election I have seen. Though we have not uh, don't uh, we are not, people are trying to all parties are trying to attract these uh, voters towards this communal uh, by saying some communal things, but people are not giving response. As we have put some non Tiganan candidates in Tiganan areas, and I have seen a good response from the Tiganan people. They are not uh, going for, uh, to vote for a communal reason. It's a, it's a, I think voters are very clever, and they know everything, and they will vote for the party which they like. Right. I, I assess the peoples are coming out when uh, my assessment is that people have mixed all these things. What is uh, in, uh, in manifesto, they are not counting, but what they will, party will do. It is, it is a part of manifesto, but what party will do and what party have done. And which party is ruling Delhi, this is a mixed response. Even I have uh, talked to some illiterate person who are not concerned about this election and power, they are also saying that which party, that the, I'll, I'll not speak because code of conduct is there. Right. Uh, but they have good response and they know everything. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'll come back to you. I'll come to you also, Rajiv <coughs> Hendik, but Mr. Dizan Sharma, uh, you know, in the first phase, your party this time faced a lot of attack from the BJP because of your alliance with the AIUDF. Mm. When your party had aligned with the AIUDF, there were a lot of division within the Congress party. Many people, let's be let's be fair, let's let's be frank. A mm. lot of people within the Congress were not happy with this alliance. Mm. And a and lot of people are asking this question, had the Congress not had an alliance with the AIUDF, perhaps the BJP would not have been able to attack you so much. Now, what is the impact of this going to be in the Brahmaputra Valley heartland that is going to the polls day after tomorrow? Now, you see, I don't agree with you. Uh, if there is there is such opposition in Aparasam, I don't agree that. Because, you see, this BJP has recently said that uh, if they come to power, they will implement uh, Ka in, us, in the state. They have said. Now, do you believe that Aparasam people are full that they will support this CA implementation of CA in, in the state? Not at all. They, Aparasam people will not support that and they will not, or they will not support implementation of CA and it will go against BJP. And this UDF, UDF, they are opposing CAA, CA, they are opposing also. So at that time, in that time, how you uh, how you can think that uh, Aparasam uh, there will face a lot of uh, opposition from uh, from different communities? Not at all. I don't believe that. And secondly, I think that if you look to the tea garden people, <coughs> there is an increase of seller, uh, wages uh, by the BJP, and the tea garden people has opposed it. They have rejected it. Recently, also also ABTA they have uh, increased some uh, wages. That also been re rejected. But our this guarantee. This 365 uh, OS, daily OS. No, BJP is saying. They, no, no, let, no, no, let, no, me, let, me, let me ask you this question. You, are, you have made a promise of, you have made a guarantee, quote unquote, mm. of 365 rupees. Yes. The BJP is saying that, you know, it is easy for anybody who is not in power to promise anything. You promise 500 rupees. No, no, we are, so we are, not, we are, no, not, we are not thinking that we are not coming to power. We are, we are saying this that we will come to power and we will implement all those guarantees which we have promised. Okay, we are we are thinking that we will come to power, and it is sure Congress will come to power this time because of the because of the high price rise in the, in in uh, in the country in the state. If you look to the price rise, people are fed up with BJP. Okay, if you, if no, you look we will the, we will we will, look we, will the we will continue with this discussion. If I'll go for a break. I'll go for a break. After coming back out of the break, I'll go straight to Dr. Rajiv Hendik and Mr. Atmaram and all, of course all the other panelists. Don't go away. I'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, let me go to you, uh, Dr. Rajiv Hendik. Dr. Rajiv Hendik, uh, you know, some panelists have said that, you know, it, it's this voting is not on communal lines. Uh, I, I never said that voting is on communal lines, but I was just pointing out the demographics in the first phase of the elections. Now, do you, do you agree that the first phase of the elections is extremely important? Because although we know that it is secret ballot, it's the electronic voting machines on which the verdict of the people will be sealed until the 2nd of May, but there is something called election hawa. Election hawa and that hawa, you know, wafts across the entire state where the polls have not been held. So can you ignore this hawa and how important is the first phase? Yeah, yeah, this definitely this uh, first phase is very, very important. And uh, at the moment, actually, hawa is, you know, we don't know actually which way it is blowing. I would say it is evenly poised, very, very evenly poised, and it might go anywhere. And I think people are also coming out of this hard mentality. I think there are people who vote for not on, you know, communal li communal lines, and they vote uh, in a, you know, they cross the border, you may say. And there are, we cannot actually say that this group of people will vote for only this party. And uh, that is true. And that makes it very interesting. But, but the point is, there is also this, this episodic opportunity that some of the voters get in this last few moments before the, before the voting starts. I think that is something that also takes away a lot of votes. I am not putting it in black and white what I am trying right. to say, no, let but me... you know, the last... <clears throat> But yeah. you know the last night, last night kill. You know last that is, night that ka kill. Yes, that is that yeah, is yeah. that is very very crucial. It can turn. That is very very turn crucial. Things that and as crucial. the CEO, let, uh, no, let me also tell you, was yeah, yeah. Please please, <clears throat> please let me add. I'm really very worried uh, for the for the very populist type of promises which have been made. Populism, as it is, you know, it is very bad for democracy. It is worse for economics. It, it creates a debt trap, actually. We are into a no, debt trap me, because of... Absolutely. This, now, that, no, no, no one can deny that. Uh, I, I'm coming to you, Mr. Kamakha Prasad Tassa, very quickly to Atmaram Kumar. You know, Professor At Atmaram Kumar, where is Atmaram Kumar on the screen? Okay. Uh, Professor Atmaram Kumar, uh, you know, my question is, the chief electoral officer who was on the show a short while ago, he said 87 crore rupees have been seized. During the electioneering, 87 crore in cash and liquor. You know, this is not a small amount. 87 crore rupees, it's almost 100 crore rupees have been seized. And this is the only seized amount. So, doesn't it reflect on money power which is at play? Uh, and this is very, very significant. And, and as, as uh, Rajiv Hendik was saying, last night ka khela. So, are people going to distribute cash? This is something which is uh, which is uh, absolutely disturbing, isn't it? Yes, of course. Uh, this seizing of eighty-seven crores—it's not a very small amount. Yes, it's a very very huge amount. And this shows. I, I feel that this is the tip of the iceberg. Okay, this, this this amount of money has only been seized, but how much more than it? Okay. Uh, might be utilized by the whichever party, I'm irrespective of the parties. That, but this has become a matter of great concern for all of us because this is not a healthy sign for democracy. Because if people's vote are bought or purchased, you know, for money, then definitely in later times after they come to power, there won't be so much thinking of the you know welfare of the people. But what we need is no. a very good governance. Kamaka what we need is a government. Right. Yeah. Kamaka Prasad Tassa. Are you a worried man or not? As a parliamentarian, you should have yes. you sh you should be a worried man because 2.32 crore people, 
2 crore voters and already in the first phase 87 crore rupees have been seized we are not bothered who this money from whose party or who is the, that is a different issue i am not concerned about that today but the fact that this 87 crore rupees have been seized by the police and the law enforcement authorities in the first phase where the total number of voters in the state is only 2 crores 2.32 crores uh, is it the cause for worry or not uh, <clears throat> it is it is very serious matter i have heard uh, was be uh, i am a I'm a member of a political party, and we do politics in the ground. What the ground situation is that you know, I'll not disclose all this because everyone the, who are related to politics they knows that it is now uh, a very serious matter. How we use this money? Who will use this money? Where this money will go? Well, it is not good for democracy. No, no, democracy is not the point where this money will go. It has been seized. But what is situation? This money has been seized. Uh, you, are, you are basically saying who, who were it meant to be used, isn't it? That's what you said. Who was the end recipient? End user. Who, who are supposed to be the end user? Oh, my question. Yes. Please carry I'm on. I'm not hearing well. Please carry on. Yes. I'm not getting your point, sir. No, no, my question is nothing. Are you worried or not? That's what. The seizure is much of money. It is disturbing. This phone is disturbing. What's it? You are, you are, you are, you are, my question is very simple. Are you worried as an MP, as a member of parliament? Are you disturbed? Are you worried yes. that so much I'm, of money has I'm, been seized? I'm, 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 I'm very much worried. I am very much worried it is not a good sign for the democracy. It should, I am, I am very much worried because huge amount of money is seized and uh, it is not good for the democracy. Uh, Kripshali, how do you look at it? Because uh, this is something which you cannot just ignore. This is a piece of statistics which will be buried in a single column or in a one paragraph of a bigger story tomorrow that, okay, 87 crore rupees have been uh. seized. Uh, you know, 2,375 people have been arrested, 5,402 arms have been deposited, 676 illegal ammunition have been, uh, you know, recovered, 43 illegal arms have been seized. So these are small statistics. But overall, you know, Kripp Chalia, we're in a state where we have just 2.32 crore people, 87 crores rupees in cash have been seized in the first phase until today itself. See, but politics and money power and uh, ill-gotten money in politics these are these are topics which has been in discussion for quite a huge so it should go on you are not bothered let me come let me it should go on you are not bothered let, 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 let me please finish my sentence reforms have been going on for for for, for years now and every reforms has been taking place in spite of the reforms in spite of the reforms certain amount of loopholes are always created now you you look at it two in two different ways 80 crores has been has been seized. Could it be that this is an efficiency of the election commission that they had been able to uh, an efficiency of our administrative process that they had been able to seize this kind of illegal gotten money? Secondly, as Kamaka said, how much of this is really ill gotten? It, it, it could be some businessman carrying money. Only after ha, ha. Yes, yes, a please. politician no, 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 no. will no, always. No, 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 most politicians no, no, will try no, no, to defend this. No, 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 no. It's not a laughable yeah. matter. It's not a laughable matter. Rajiv Gandhi, keep chalaya. No. There are a lot of people. Is, I have seen. He's a politician. I have seen. There are and he has to defend ordinary fellow politicians. There is an ordinary. There is an ordinary mystery. A, a mystery who is doing uh, artwork. Okay, we are. He was carrying some money. That money was also seized, but that was returned. That was returned. So how much of this we'll money is We'll have to wait. Yeah. We'll have to wait Illegal. and watch. How much, how we'll how much to, of this we'll money is we'll left? No, no, we'll have to wait. No, no, let me finish. No, no let's not. No, this is a very serious uh, discussion. Let me, let me offer it. I don't want to offer, make a light of comment. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you are talking about uh, arm power, money power and all that. I will say that this has diminished to a great extent. To a great extent over the years. Now we are in a better position. Now there is not so, so much fear. Are you saying? Being conducted in a are you standard. saying? Are you saying indirectly? That from the Congress rule, the use of money power it's has been a question of Congress. Today. No mistake. 
it has been it has been so with all political parties and every political party has been making a concerted attack attempt do you think sharma to, how do you look at it very quickly no, no, but we let's go to the other aspects of the debate it, very quickly it, last it, seizure of 87 crores is a matter of uh, worry and we must admit it and it is dangerous for democracy but what kirip sali has, has said he has also a point that there are some monies which the some businessmen went to deposit in the bank that has been seized and that will be returned in one time so we have to see that we have to wait, wait we, we, wait ha we have to we King. have to see that but right. but we must admit i must admit that this money this ill gotten money mostly they have they wanted to play money power they this some people some political parties i don't mention who who which political party i may be from congress but this is this is a very dangerous situation and this should not happen and it is dangerously uh, uh, very dangerous for uh, democracy so i don't support such right. type, such system no 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 uh, let me let me once again take the views uh, uh, professor atmaram kumar i'm coming to you janki uh, uh, professor atmaram kumar you know uh, we we have all heard that we have seen the election manifestos we have seen what the major political parties are promising to the voters that's a different story where i'm not going to go into that uh do you think the people generally go into what the election manifestos are talking or what the leaders are talking or do you think still still people look at candidates or they are not bothered about candidates they are only bothered about the parties and what the party narratives are talking about what is the sense that you are getting on the ground uh so far my observation goes uh in certain uh, respects the people will of course uh, you know go for the candidate they will have their own choice likes and dislike for a candidate but in certain other respects of course the party will also have you know some sway over the minds of the people so i think uh, uh, in certain respects you know some candidates uh, have uh, you know popularity in the uh, community or among the people so in those cases of course uh, there will be the candidates who will the uh, people favor for you know vote for but in when they don't have any choice they will of course you know go with side with some party which right. they like right right now come uh, like i'm to... running short of time come ekha tasa come ekha tasa the your party's campaign momentum yes. uh the momentum was unbeatable this time it was a blazing campaign by the bjp particularly dr himanta biswa sharma Uh, of course we have seen prime minister coming many times the home minister coming many times but in the state it was dr himanta biswa sharma all the way even today before the campaigning ended from sadia to biswana chareli to uh, to you name it you know to batadrava to soru to soru pathar if i am not mistaken and so on and so forth he was hopping from one place to another what do you have to say Pardon. Okay, we have got a very bad line to Kamakha Prasad Tasa. Okay, I just don't have time. Janki, can you take that question? See the overall. Um, as I told you, it is not just the campaign process. Yes, the campaign process has been very good, and especially if you look at him on the Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma's efforts to uh, to reach out to the people. to uh, uh, to campaign in favor of bjp his efforts have been tremendous and it has worked very well because he has this capacity to connect with the masses and that's why he has been probably traveling the lengths and breadth of the state to reach out to the people so that so that he can pass on the right message the correct message and it is not only to garner votes i have seen that he has got this ability he has got this willingness to reach out to the people so that is one thing and there are actually if you give me some time i wanted to counter a few points that you know yeah. kirip chaliha had quickly, uh, yeah quickly. kirip chaliha had mean uh, kirip uh, kirip da had said that we are distributing freebies so it is not a question of distributing free freebies we are a welfare government it is the duty of a welfare government to help the extremely poor now if we are distributing uh, uh, briddha pension and we have created a beneficiary base of around 12 lakhs people don't you think we are giving them a sigh of relief okay. we are giving free That's admissions don't point, you think don't you think point, we have given me. a sigh of relief to those poor people uh, I'm, first I'm, of I'm all those of that bpl yeah, line should not have been there after 70 years of rule of the congress dijan uh, uh, sharma please respond to seconds you see bjp has done a lot of things in campaigning and we have seen today that congress is also equally fighting and congress is going to people 
to say our things, to say about the Congress policies and ideals. And I believe today, I have come to a conclusion after the first phase of campaigning that our party has done a very good job in campaigning. And I believe that uh, most of the seats, and I am hopeful that 35 out of 47, 35 seats will, will, will be okay. able to win. All right. Uh, that, is, that is my last. That is your last observation. Mm -hmm. uh, final comments from you, Dr. Rajiv Hindik, very quickly. Uh, well, uh, the, the, the state, you know, 47 seats are going to the polls. I take this opportunity to convey my salutations to all the election officials who will be, you know, taking up this onerous task of going to the remote corners of the right. state of to these constituencies to take the vote. Right. And I hope people will vote with their conscience. People will not be swayed by the rhetoric. They will see reason. They will not be, uh, you know, maybe they have taken the enticement, Absolutely but, very, they, will, they, right, but they, right. they will have the right. capacity very, to look very, beyond. Very relevant so, and very sensible words, those. Kamakya Prasad Tasa, final comments, if you can hear me. Uh, finally, are you confident you will be doing well in phase one? Yes, I am confident we'll do, we are, people will vote for us. And I have seen that people are coming out of their house uh, to attend the meetings of our party. And they will vote for our alliance, but not only uh, BJP, but also AGP. And I'm confident that we'll get more and more seats in the first phase election. We'll have to wait and watch. Uh, Atmaram Kumar, 20 seconds. OK, so uh, this is going to be a very crucial case because it's the first phase. And the situation seems to be delicately poised. And the key people are going to make a very big difference to this election uh, in this very first phase. And it is going to decide the future course of the action. I would like to appeal all the people to come out of their houses. Absolutely, their absolutely. Leaders. Very well said. Uh, we will all appeal to the people to come out in large numbers. At the end of the day, this is a democracy and a people's right to choose uh, their lawmakers, their candidates who will represent them and form the government. At the end of the day, uh, this is not the last word. We have to wait and watch what happens on the first phase of the polling and, of course, the second and third, yes, no one can no one can predict elections. It's a secret ballot, and yes, all the parties are confident. They, they are ought to be confident. Otherwise, how can they fight a battle? But we'll have to wait until the second of May to know the verdict. I thank all my panelists for being on the show and the viewers for watching the program. Good night and goodbye.